what's going on man welcome back to another video so we're doing a video on marcus brown lee um my girlfriend really loves him and his reviews uh he's kind of like the number one guy in the reviewing space whether it's technology um car reviews and stuff like that but he's kind of under fire a little bit um people are accusing him of tanking companies or making so many bad reviews that it tanks companies or something like that like he had one that he just did and uh, i think it was like the ai pin or something like that it was some shit you put on your fucking chest and apparently it was ass like ass ass and so uh, he didn't like it it was also like the fisker he got in trouble not in trouble that's kind of a bad word for it but he got under fire for that too as well um the company actually responded as well and i'll play that as well but um yeah we're gonna get into this review or or being really good to even be considered for a review or sometimes really really bad so there's been a lot of interesting discourse lately on this topic there will be you know some negative reviews and then a company will eventually go out of business and then the internet poses the question do bad reviews kill companies do bad reviews kill companies or do bad products kill companies i yeah I, I do have a lot of thoughts so two of the biggest examples that have been pointed to especially on twitter were the fisker ocean review that i did and the humane ai pin from a couple days ago so the fisker saga was pretty well documented but in case you missed it i reviewed a car i had a pretty horrible experience with it documented it published their review on the autofocus channel and then a few months later, the entire company appears to be on life support, like likely filing for bankruptcy soon. And now this startup, Humane, you know, they dropped their first product, this pin. I review it. It's not super positive. A lot of people are saying the same thing. And I don't even think Humane is going anywhere, by the way. But I think there is some. And then the thing is, is like people are saying that he like if you saw that tweet, um, so he, they said that he bankrupt a company in 41 seconds. Are you slow? <laughs> like, like I, I give Brown Lee, Marcus Brown Lee, probably the same amount of power as like Heath Lee on TikTok. Like, yes, your review is going to give some type of impact, but honestly, the worst part of the review is how the company responds to that review. If you're doubling down and saying that this is a great product, knowing that you're about to give us shit, and then you go out and you attack um, Marcus Brownlee or like a Keith Lee or something like that, then people know that you're just trying to make money. You're not actually trying to produce a great product. You're just upset that a lot of people know how shitty your fucking product is. And that's who, who gives a fuck. Um, the only time that I will say a bad review um, is bad is when, if for some reason in this culture now, there's a culture of people leaving bad reviews just because they don't like the person or they don't like um, what that person stands for or something like that. So people will, if they don't like you, they'll find your business and then they'll just rack up a whole bunch of like bad reviews knowing they haven't eaten there, they haven't tried your product or anything like that. To me, that is distasteful than a bitch. Like, what are you doing? Um, and that's how I just feel about that pretty simple logic we can use to decipher what the, the real danger is to these companies, which is, do you still get a bunch of negative reviews and then die as a company if the product is actually really good? But you know, let's back up for a second. What is a review? A little pet peeve of mine is I think people misuse or overuse that word a lot, but a review is just somebody uses a product and then just delivers their impressions on whether they think it's any good or not, how well it actually worked. And if their honest opinion is if it's good, then that's the review. If it's bad, that's the review. That's basically it. And so I've been an advocate of good independent reviews for what feels like forever now. But the thing about reviews is if they're not honest, then they're basically useless. I really strongly feel like every... That's absolute facts. Like, there are some companies that pay influencers to review their product and just say that it's good and shit or and stuff like that. And, and those companies never really sell 
shit because you're you as a customer you're gonna get the product right and so you're gonna start seeing that this product isn't what it stands for and to me that's just false advertisement but um a lot of times you know people just want their money back or they're not gonna buy anything else from you so i love people like marcus brown lee simply because uh he's very very honest if it is trash he's gonna tell you that's trash um but if it's not as bad, he's going to give you the flaws in it, but he's going to give you the good stuff as well. And I, that's why I do like some of his reviews. Everything that comes from a review, all the consequences and everything that comes around it, everything in the world of an ecosystem of reviews depends on the review being truthful and actually honest about things. So let me, I'll just give an example. I've told this story before, but years ago, I remember I reviewed the first uh, Razer phone when it came out. So Razer, gaming company, they make lots of stuff. They're getting into smartphones for the first time. So they made a phone that appeals to the same target demographic of gamers. So you know, it had a bunch of upsides and downsides, obviously gaming focused features. So it's got like front facing speakers and a high refresh rate. The battery is pretty big, but also the camera was weak. And I specifically, I remember I, the vibration motor was horrible. And I remember calling it out. I remember saying this. Also the vibration motor in this phone, trash. Straight trash. I'm gonna call myself so you can hear this. That's nasty. <laughs> Listen to that. It sounds broken, like it's, but it sounded that way out the box since day one. So that is the Razer phone. Just one of the worst vibration motors I've ever experienced in a new phone. So, okay, fast forward a year, right? I'm at a briefing, it's in New York City, it's for the Razer phone. Too. And so they're walking me and some other people through this new phone they've made, and they've got a bunch of changes. It's got a glossy back. They added wireless charging now. The logo glows, and like the speakers are better, and all this stuff. And they're talking us through it. And then the guy turns to me and he says, And Marquez, you gotta try the new vibration motor in this phone. And it's such a niche thing, but I, sure enough, I try it, and it's way better. And that's, to me, what. That's a big part of what reviews are all about. That honest feedback turned into actually action for the company to make it better. So people who bought the I don't know if like Razer still makes those phones or something like that. I guess y'all can let me know that in the comments section. But I used to want one when it first came out. But like that's so true. Like if you actually gave a fuck and the fact that they actually like seen his his product and instead of like, you know, yelling at him or something like that, instead of like attacking him they just said look let's go fix this shit this shit does sound like shit we we can admit that let's go fix it you know what i'm saying like clearly the razor phone was good enough for you to make a two and he didn't he didn't bankrupt you then so it's like you were able to make another product i don't get it i don't get why people think bad res bad reviews like bankrupt people first one knew what they were getting into and people who bought the second one actually benefited from that. So that's number one. Honesty, obviously, is super important. But the second thing is these reviews are also definitely for the people that are watching them and consuming them. Right. So you've probably been in the situation when you're, you're about to buy something and you just want to double check. So you, you hop on YouTube, you search it up, watch a couple of videos about the product just to make sure you're not missing anything. And then you either decide on the moment or later that day, like, okay, yeah, I'm definitely going to buy it. We've all been there. I, that's the reason that's exactly how this YouTube channel started. Like my first ever tech video was reviewing a laptop, but specifically I, I bought the laptop with my allowance money in high school and I found a Windows Media Center remote in the PCI slot that wasn't in any of the other reviews. So the first thing I decided to do was talk through it in a video so that anyone else who bought the laptop after me would know about it. So Damn, he's been doing this for a very long time. Look how young he was in that video i don't know how old he is now but like he looked like he looked like he was still in like middle school or like high school bro so he's been doing this a very fucking long time bro that's kind of crazy so you're thinking about buying a thing you watch a couple reviews of the thing you learn everything you need to know boom success but here's where it gets a little bit interesting i do have a bit of an extra dimension on my hands with these videos because i know that there's no way that every single person watching a review of every single product is one of those people who was considering buying it. I get that comment actually in person all the time. I, you know, I watch the reviews even though I'm not buying any of this stuff. 
So I know that a lot of people, in fact, most people watching these videos are actually just here to watch an interesting, informative, good video in general, an, an entertaining video. And so the way that I satisfy those things is much more subjective, I think. Like everyone has a different way they do it. Everyone has a different target demographic, but that's a little bit of a new dimension. So then I think if we go back to the original question, so can, uh, can a video be, can a video kill a company? I'll use the uh, Humane and Fisker examples specifically. The Fisker Ocean was a terrible car. It is a terrible car. I've reviewed about 40, 50 different cars in the past few years, made That's videos pretty, about pretty many of them. Cool. This is the first one where I genuinely couldn't wait to be done driving it. Like, it just had tons of problems, bugs, missing features, safety issues, like it's just bad, right? So I review the thing, I give people what I feel is a fair assessment that also doubles as a warning not to buy this bad car. Um, so hopefully it's entertaining and informative to the majority of people who weren't thinking about buying the car, but also that it is as honest as possible with the people who are. And maybe- What's crazy is also, and I'm just telling this quick story and then I'm gonna get back to it. So in California, I was pulling up to a doctor's office or something like that. I don't know. You get to see like all the little cool cars in California. It was the first time I got to see like the Raven, if, if that's what it's called, a Raffin or something like that. Um, there, I got to see a cyber truck out there, things like that, right? And then one day I pulled it pulled up. I had never heard of a Fisker before. Um, I just heard of the lyrics uh, from Childish Gambino where he's like, Fiskers don't make noise when they start up, just so you know. Like, I don't know if y'all have ever heard that song. But um, long story short, uh, I pulled up. I was like, what type of car is that? And um, the lady ended up coming out, and I asked her, like, hey, is this your car? And what type of cars is a Fisker? And Fiskers do look, like, nice, like, out in public. They look really, really nice. And so I was like, oh, man, like, one day if I, I ever get money, like, that's what I want. I want, like, a Fisker. If I'm gonna get like a um, electric car or something like that, I thought they look cooler than Tesla, to be honest with you. Long story short, after that, I think like three days later, that's when um, Brown Lee dropped his fucking review. That's when he dropped it. So I was like, "Damn, dog, it's, it got so many problems with it. I guess I won't be getting a Fisker." So you know, hey man, full circle. It's, it's a funny. week or <laughs> two later, the company's stock price is plummeting to an all-time low and they appear to be like filing for bankruptcy. Cue the internet going nuts, which I, ge I guess I get it. Like obviously it makes a nice headline like, oh, this, this review came out and it killed this company. This review bankrupted all of Fisker maybe. Like there was a whole morning brew thread on how Fisker handled this video so poorly that they're now gonna go bankrupt because of it. Also, there were there were whole stock investment themed channels saying this was like a paid promoted attack against the Fisker stock price. Like it got pretty crazy. But did one review kill the entire company? I would say to zoom out a bit, I would really I think it's important to zoom out a bit, actually. First of all, I was not the only one to review the car, not even close. And so, yes, the stock price did drop after my video, but the stock was in free fall for many, many months before my video, too. And if you zoom out on YouTube or in the car review space in general, I was far from the only person saying these things about the car for all of these months. Many other reviewers had been having a plethora of issues, even stuff that I didn't have with this thing. I actually, I feel like that might be the easiest way to tell if a review is honest or not like we're 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 all reviewing the same product basically if, you, if we all have the same thing so we're all going to find a lot of the same things we're all eventually going to have a lot of the same upsides downsides if there are issues they may eventually surface so yeah there this is why i use youtube for like damn near everything nowadays because you can if you want to find somebody find somebody you can find them on youtube bro if you're important enough, they, somebody has written a story on you or has done a reaction video or something like that. If you want to find a product, you can find a reaction video to it. You can find a, um, any type of video outside of just Marcus Brown Lee. Like, I think that that's the, the, the beauty of like YouTube is that you can just find whoever the fuck you need to find. Um, and that's cool. Like, that's cool to me. So I, to, to blame him for this, it's kind of crazy, like to to blame, and it's because he's one of the one of, if not the biggest, 
um, voices in the tech space. So I get it. I get it a little bit, but it's still it's still idiotic or ignorant to to think that. They're they're probably gonna agree with each other. A bunch of honest reviews. They'll all say a lot of the same stuff. Oh, and also the in the U.S. the stock price. There's this thing where if uh, if a stock what is it? If it's below a, a dollar for however many days in a row, then they'll get a warning that they may be delisted and they have six months to get the stock price back up over a dollar. And Fisker had just received that notice right around the same time that my, I think right before my video came out actually. And if you're an investor, you're looking at that, that's the type of stuff that really tanks the stock price if you're asking me. And if you're asking me personally, I, I, literally don't care what the stock price is of any company of any product I review. I just don't care. <laughs> and so if I'm if I'm talking about a product that will never have anything to do with what I say about the product, and I, I hope that's not true about other people either. And I shouldn't even have to say this. I, I'm not invested in any companies that I cover. It's just a matter of trying to make an informative, educational, and honest video review. That's my goal. My only goal is to do that. And I don't have any duty to any of the companies whose products I cover. It is only to the people watching the videos. So now, okay, fast forward to, you know, pretty recently, the Humane AI pin comes out. A lot of the same stuff, right? Like this pin has a lot of missing promises that, you know, the things it does, it doesn't actually do super well, on and on. I tried to be as fair as possible and as informative as possible, but I'm also absolutely not about to sugarcoat or leave anything out to protect any company's $700 device with a monthly subscription. Not into that. But yet, even still, there are some threads blowing up saying, it's extra bad what I did to this poor company. And, you know, maybe you could argue, since this is the biggest... And then people think just because you have a big following that you should sugarcoat your shit. It's like, how do you think they got that big following? They got that big following by being honest. It was like I said, I, I compare him to like, like Keith Lee. Like people think that because you have a bigger following, you have to dim down your review because they think that it can. Re First of all, if you create a product, you have plenty of ability to um, hire people to come in and review it. Um, hire people to look at the product and things like that. And the thing is, most most first products are, I wouldn't say trash, but they're not the greatest because again, you know, especially with a startup company, you probably only got so much money that you can really throw into your first product. You're really just trying to get the main stuff built into it and stuff. And then you're going to make improvements, upgrades, things like that as people buy it and actually invest into the uh, product. And then the other part of this conversation that I just doesn't make sense Shareholders could give two shits about reviews. Shareholders have way more information, way more things that they're looking at. They could give two shits about um, the review of a Marcus Brownlee. Like, not to say that like his thing doesn't make an impact in the real world, but they're looking at other things other than just like, okay, is this guy going to say a shit or whatever the case may be. Um, and, you know, last thing is like Marcus said something that was that was very great. Um, most people look at his videos. He gets two point two million vi um, views, three million, five million views. Most times, most of the people just looking at it because it's interesting. They're not buying that shit. Most of the people that are buying it, they, they might look at it to see, you know, the little trinkets and stuff like that. But majority of the time, those people have already made the decision that they're going to buy the shit. <laughs> like that they just want to see what it looks like so you know i i don't know why people are giving um marcus uh, um marquise excuse me um uh uh shit <laughs>